to Easy Eats. My name is Chef Eve Deshane, and today we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with uh, Koichi Sato. Yeah. Welcome, Koichi. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, what will you be making for us today? So I'll be making katsudon, one of my favorite Japanese dishes. Katsudon, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, I know a little bit about Japanese. It's always been uh, a kind of a, one of those back things for me. Mm -hmm. I, I've delved into kind of Asian food when I was in culinary school more and the, the, the Thai and the Chinese, but Japanese was always seemed to be one of those ones that seemed a little too fancy, not fancy, <laughs> but it's perfection and and uh, and that's what I admired about it was mm -hmm. it was so specific and precise and, and, and the steps seemed a little too, I guess in my young culinary mind, a little mm. too scary to attempt, but uh, I'm happy to have you on and yeah. to show me one of these wonderful dishes. But before we get started, yes. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, sir. Yes, so yeah, I was uh, born in Montreal. My father's Japanese. My mom is from El Salvador. Wow, yeah. Um, so yeah, I grew up with like all these different cultures um, and food was really a, a vehicle for me to really explore my roots and really get acquainted with uh, both Japanese and Salvadoran uh, culture. Uh, my father's a chef, a Japanese chef, chef, so I really learned to cook Japanese by watching him. Um, and yeah, so this is one of my favorite dishes that he taught me how to do. Like so your father's a chef. Did you yes. follow in his footsteps? Are you a chef yourself? I am not a chef. Uh, I, I'm a avid home cook. Okay, <laughs> I yeah, love yeah. trying new things. Um, I did do a pop-up restaurant in Montreal, and I do like doing some food projects, um, but I'm not a chef per se. Okay, so what do you do to spend your time other than coming and hang out with us here on Easy Eats? Yeah, so I'm currently a project manager for a web development company. Um, yeah, that's what I do as a day job and during my free time, cook, bake, um, do all the different cooking activities. You grew up in Montreal, mm -hmm. you're from Montreal. What brought you to Fredericton? Yes, so my partner's family is in Fredericton. Okay. Um, so uh, last year we decided to basically bring both our families together. So I, I came here with my dad and my partner. Um, so we're all here in the same city. But yeah, it's fairly new. I've only been here for about a year. Right on. So uh, we we met you through the Multicultural mm -hmm. Association. So uh, uh, now that you're here, I guess, let, let, let's talk about the Multicultural mm -hmm. little Association a little bit. Um, yeah. Were they instrumental in helping you kind of find your footing here? Yeah, absolutely. So as soon as like I was uh, planning to move here, I kind of started looking at what was available in terms of different like cultural communities, especially for Japanese, uh, like a Japanese community, mostly for my father, but also for me to be acquainted with people with the same similar background. Um, so yeah, so I reached out to them. They were super kind, super helpful. They invited us to their New Year's party. Um, so I met a few people there and they've been really warm and, and this is how I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so it's great. Uh, the uh, the Chinese have their Lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. um, was it uh, was it a Lunar New Year celebrated in Japan? I think historically, uh, the Japanese people used to celebrate uh, New Year's with like along with the other uh, East Asian countries or Asian countries. Uh, so with the Lunar New Year, uh, but they kind of changed to the Western New Year, which is the same one that we celebrate in Canada. Um, yeah, so there's a change there. Um, in terms of like the different approaches to New Year's in Japan, it's much more family oriented. I feel like here, you know, you go out with friends, you go to yeah, a club, yeah, yeah. you go to a bar, uh, but in Japan, it's very much more uh, family. Um, yeah, and I mean, side note, like in Christmas too, it's like a really different approach uh, over there. Um, so usually it'll be couples that have like, I think it's a strawberry uh, shortcake, okay. and they'll just share that. So more of a romantic, um, vibe to it um, and a big thing there is uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so you actually have to book it a couple of weeks in advance if you want a bucket of chicken for Christmas because it's quite popular. Um, I think it's just like their idea of like uh, kind of having a, uh, a taste of Western version of Christmas. So that's what why KFC is popular there for that time of year. So you spent time in Japan, have you? Yes. Yes, I spent a year in Japan. I taught English for junior high. Uh, school students. I did three schools, which is really fun. Let's talk about that kind of uh, the industry there. Is it is yeah. it more street food? Is it more? Uh, is, is it restaurants like here in North America? Let's talk about the food culture there. Yeah. So I spent most of my time in Tokyo. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure how it is elsewhere, but there's a massive amount of restaurant in in Tokyo. Um, so it's very, very affordable. There's all kinds of foods. Um, you know, you go have the little small izakayas like you know, a few seated around a bar so you can talk to the person cooking, uh, up to like bigger restaurants. Uh, so yeah, it's, it really varies, uh, but I feel like 
food in Tokyo at least is very affordable compared to what people think. Okay. Um, or you can find very affordable, affordable food. food. If you want to spend a lot of money, you can do that too. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I never really worried about costs when I was there, and I was on a teacher salary, well, a part-time teacher salary in Japan, so. Yeah. <laughs> What's the school life like for children in Japan compared to us here in North America? Um, there's a lot of different uh, after-school clubs. Okay. So whether it's like, uh, ping pong, or what uh, they usually refer that to table tennis, um, soccer, uh, tea ceremonies. Um, so there's a lot of after school uh, activities. And yeah, students do tend to like start school early and then go on quite late. So I think on average, like each student had at least one club. Um, and I think they also had, a lot of them had after school school. So like I think tutoring and help with okay, the yeah. support. Um, yeah, I think especially like when they're nearing high school and university, that's when the pressure to perform well comes in um, to get into the good school. So they do uh, tend to get that extra help. Um, but yeah, it's, it's long days. After the break, we'll uh, we'll get back and we'll get we'll get right into uh, making the katsu don with you. Amazing. So we'll be back after these few messages. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Again, we're in the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen with Kyoji Sato, and he's going to show us how to make katsudan. So take it away, Kyoji. Absolutely. So first, we're going to do the mise en place. Uh, so we're just going to cut a few things, put it in the bowls. Um, so let's start with the onion. So you can use any type of onion for this, or is there a specific onion that you're looking for? Um, I mean, I think you can use whatever onion you want. You want it to be a little bit on the sweeter end. Okay. Um, so I usually use white. Okay. But yeah, whatever you have on hand. Wh really. Whatever you have in the in the pantry for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to cut the onions on the thicker end of things. Um, but yeah, again, if you have preferences for more thinly sliced onions, go ahead. I think whatever will make you enjoy the dish, go for it. All right. So ketsu don. For those who don't know, again, let let let's just walk through not walk through the dish, but what is it exactly? Yes. So. Katsu don literally means, well, so there's like the different parts of the word. So yeah. katsu uh, refers to tonkatsu, so which is the pork cutlet. Okay. And don is basically referring to donburi, which is a type of Japanese dish, which is uh, anything that's served on top of a rice bowl. Okay. Um, and yeah, actually an interesting fact about uh, the terminology is that katsu, the verb to win um, is also katsu. So okay. a lot of students in Japan or uh, before they go through it, a big exam, we'll eat katsudon okay, the night before like a, a little bit. Charm, yeah, sort of, yeah, exactly. And I guess a protein healthy and fried dish would probably, you, you, <laughs> you, you would think it would be too heavy to go into an exam with. Yeah, well they might have it the day before, but I think it's just like, yeah, just to bring a bit of good luck, good luck before yeah. the exam. So I noticed you're using green onions as well. So yes. uh, is there, the green onions, for garnish, more or less? Yeah, or it's more for garnish, just to like make it a little bit more pretty. So I just cut in a julienne on a diagonal. And this is something that you sprinkle basically at the end. Okay, yeah. Right before the dish is done cooking. And then I'll grate some ginger. So this is actually a tool I really like using. Well, I, w I, w I was admiring it when, yeah. we, when we were setting up, and I was like, that's a really nice uh, ginger grater, right? Yes. So it's technically used uh, for our daikon, okay. usually, but I think it grates ginger and garlic one beautifully. So just like a really easy way. Well, that's it because they tend to be sticky and, yeah. and uh, it looks like it's, uh, yeah, it. quick and easy. Super quick and easy. Yeah, so there's not a lot of prep to it, really. No, it seems like it's a, a very simple dish, which again on Easy Eats is what we're we're looking for, and it's uh, and fairly inexpensive, I guess. The uh, you're looking at the cutlets are are, are the most expensive. Uh, a piece of uh, piece in this dish. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm just uh, gonna crack two eggs here, beat it lightly. You still want it to have like you want to see both the white and the the yolk when you're cooking it. So you just don't want to beat it too hard. This is for uh, the end okay. as well. Okay. Absolutely. Now, notice your chopsticks are a lot longer than the yes. uh, the chopsticks that I that uh, that we're used to seeing. Are yeah. these? Uh, a specific chopstick for cooking, or do you just, uh, yeah? 
Yeah, so they're basically, uh, yeah, cooking chopsticks. Uh, they're made longer so that you're not too close to the source of heat, especially when you're frying. You want this splatter yeah. all over your hand. Um, yeah, but it's a really handy tool. Um, I love cooking with uh, long chopsticks. Let's make the sauce. Sure. Great. So I will measure out. So one tablespoon of sake. And for those who don't know, what 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 is sake? Um, so sake is a rice wine. Okay. And yeah, it's basically what people tend to drink when they're having Japanese dinners. Like if you go to a restaurant, you can order sake usually hot or cold. I personally like it warm. Um, but yeah, it's basically what you can get at the liquor store. I'm adding four tablespoons of soy sauce. And this is mirin, which is a sweet uh, version of the rice wine. Now I'm adding the, the hondashi. So this is basically the dried stock. Yeah. Um, so you can, if you have like f liquid hondashi, then you can definitely use that. And what does uh, the dashi add to the, uh, to the sauce? Yeah, so I add some umami, some saltiness. Um, yeah, it just really makes the dish more balanced. There are five ways of tasting, right? There's yes. salty, there's sweet, there's sour, there's bitter, and then mm -hmm. umami, which mm -hmm. is that unctuous, full feeling. Yeah, so I added the bonito and added some sugar. Uh, now I'm going to add the grated ginger. So this is not traditional. It's more of my dad's addition, but okay, it's yeah. what I grew up with. So like whenever I eat katsudon, I'd always look for that uh, kick of ginger. Yeah, so then you have basically the base ready. So now we can batter our pork. There we go. So I noticed that you've got the three bowls out right yes. there. So the, bre the breading method is probably pretty similar, I mean, internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of similar to, uh, well, we, we liken it to uh, a, a schnitzel or, yes. uh, or, a, or a scallopini or, mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. So I guess that would be the, uh, the Japanese version of that would be the, the katsu. So I'm just going to prepare the flour. Yeah, so you just didn't need enough to like coat the yeah. pork. Doesn't have to be. Well, that's it. The flour is used so the egg can stick to the cutlet, right? Yes, exactly. And then. So that, and then the egg, the panko will stick to the egg. And so, and panko, panko is different than regular old breadcrumb, and uh, how is it different than? Yeah, so it's actually, it's very fascinating how panko is made. Um, so like sometimes in, in uh, like in the industrial production, basically what they do is that they run, they run electrical current through the bread, so it cooks from the inside. So you oh, don't neat. have that hard crust, which yeah. is why like there's no, no you brown. Know, no caramelization yeah. brown bits. And it also makes the, the, the crumbs more airy. So I'm just going to grab my pork. Um, great. So yeah, so we have the pork salted. Sometimes I'll cut the, like the connective tissue if it's like a thicker um, pork. And that's so it doesn't curl up, correct? Yeah, exactly. And then I noticed that you're, you're cutting it all the way down the, uh, the, 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 uh, the fat line. Yes. You can also take some of the fat off if you prefer it to not be as fatty. I personally like it. Yeah. So we're checking the oil temperature here. So we want to make sure that it's not too high and mm -hmm. it, so it'll, it'll burn quicker, right? So what kind of temperature are we looking at for our oil? Um, I think 340. Well, I think I usually do it 340 in a pan just because you don't have as much control over You're the right, temperature. Yeah. But if I'm doing like a, if I have my deep frying machine, then yeah, I'll put it at 350, okay. 360. Um, but yeah, I just like to have a bit more control in the pan. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and again, a little safety on this is make sure that we're shallow frying. Yes. So when you're shallow frying, we're only putting about an inch or so mm -hmm. of, of oil in the pan. We're not filling that right up. Yeah. And we're going to have to turn it. And make sure that, again, you've got an open space. Yes. Um, we have our hair tied up and pulled back. Yes. Things like that. No one wants to get hurt. Yeah. You, you, you scored the, uh, the meat so it doesn't roll on itself. Yeah. And so what's the next step in the breading process? Yeah. So we're just going to bread it. We're going to put it in the flour first. So yeah, this is more of a binding agent so that the egg can stick to it, as you mentioned before. Yeah, and I like to like kind of press it down a little bit in the panko just so that you get as much of it as possible. As possible, absolutely. So I notice you're using your tongs, which yes. is really, really smart because you don't want to get your fingers messy. Yes. But if you don't have tongs and you want to use your hands, I always suggest that you use one for flour and egg and the other one for panko because you end, you'll end up with big fat fingers <laughs> that will be useless. That's true.
we're breaded. There you go. So we'll let the oil get up to its optimal temperature, and then we'll be back to fry it right after the break. Welcome back to Easy Eats again in the Greener Village's kitchen with Kyoji Sato, and we are making katsudon. Mm -hmm. um, our oil is ready. Yes. Our cutlets are ready. Yes. Um, before we start, I noticed that they're they're nice and thin. Is that something that you're looking for? Yeah. So I tend to do like half an inch to an inch, just because it's easier to fry and like yep. at the right temperature. So our next steps. Yes. So we're gonna fry, and at the same time, we're start to broth uh, okay. or the, the sauce. So I'll just put the onions into the pan that's heating up here. And right after, I'll just give this a little stir and put the sauce in. So we're just literally just poaching those onions into the broth. We're not giving it any color. We're not sauteing or sweating them out at all. No, exactly. You're just like cooking in the sauce until it's like a little bit translucent. So I am going to start frying the pork. So these, this is a little bit on the thinner end, so it should go quite quick. But you want it to have like a couple minutes on each side, depending on the thickness. Well, that's it. You notice that our oil is, is all right because it's not spitting back mm -hmm. at us, and, and that's what you're kind of looking for. Maybe we'll see what it looks like on one side. Let's see a little bit more. And there we go. You said that these are usually made to order, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I guess it would be kind of like quick, easy kind of food made in the streets, right? And is, it, is this a, a comfort food in Japan, would you say? Yeah, it's not so much a street food. You definitely, like, there'll be restaurants that specializes in this. Maybe like a restaurant that like tends to specialize in tonkatsu type dishes. Okay. Um, so katsudon or like other pork cutlet dishes. So I'll just stir this as well. So you just want this to be a little bit more translucent. So just a few minutes. Okay, so the onions are gonna start to get a little bit more transparent and that's when you, okay. Yeah. We're also noticing that the, the pork is floating a little bit more. Yeah. It's a little bit more buoyant, so that way you can mm. kind of tell that when it's almost ready as well. Yeah, absolutely. So what are we looking for? Um, I usually go by look, just so that it's like an even brown. Gotcha, okay. I think it's so. okay. Great. Yeah, so you just want the, a little bit of the grease to drip off. After about a minute, you kind of just cut it into thick slices. I can do about like half an inch. Okay. Yeah. Looks like our onions are almost ready yes. here. So, uh, so maybe I'll just cut into it. So you want to keep it in the same shape. Okay, yeah. So you just cut it in like half inch, a little bit bigger. So yeah, so that's basically what you want, just to have it a little bit translucent. Um, and so that the sauce also has a flavor of the onions. Perfect, and, it, and just a nice little happy simmer going on. Yes. You don't want it to roll or... Exactly. Um, so I tend to put some of the eggs first. Okay. Just so that it already starts cooking. And then the rest after I put the pork. Okay, and then I guess you would have egg on, on both sides of the pork cutlet as well, wouldn't you? Yes. Traditionally, you would just put all the egg at once. Um, but I feel like in Japan, you tend to like your eggs a little less set. Okay, yeah. And I just pour it. Here. Less said, like a French omelet. I like my yes. I like my omelets. Uh, like they say, bevues a little bit, oh, uh, cool. a little uh, a little juicy. I don't like them overcooked. Yes. Yeah, so and then we just cover it. Just cover it. Leave it for a few minutes. Um, once it's almost set, we'll add the green onions. Okay. Then we'll put the cover again and let it set to your liking, really. And then the whole thing goes right over top. You like you said, yes. a bowl of rice. Absolutely, just over a bowl of rice, and you ladle the, the juice all around it and then you because like so the rice really gets to absorb that sauce um, so every bite is like flavorful and great. Are there any condiments that you yeah. would traditionally serve with this? So this is a, a Japanese seven spice with so shichimi. Okay. Um, so yeah there's different kinds of uh, different blends different things in it so like uh, chili, uh, mandarin, black sesame. Yeah, so there's actually like stands in, in or uh, stores in Japan where you can go and they, they'll combine um, the different uh, ingredients in front of you and then you can also choose what you want. So you can make your own seven spices, yeah, is that exactly. the idea? Yeah, that, That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, yeah it's, and it's like super, because it's so fresh, super flavorful. Um, I do sometimes actually add uh, pickled ginger, so okay, I just yeah. find that like sweetness and that like acidity really helps the dish. I'm curious. I'm Absolutely, yeah. So that's great. So then we can start adding the spring onions. 
Just cover it again for maybe like a minute. So we're just kind of wilting those onions and trying to get a little bit of flavor out of them as well? Is yeah. that kind of what we're doing? Yeah, or? exactly. And get much, as much flavor from everything. Let's start plating it. Perfect. So I, I know that you've made some rice ahead of time for us. I did, using my handy favorite rice cooker. Which is uh, one of those uh, appliances that I think almost every home needs. It's oh, yes. uh, is such an easier way to do it than, than on the pot. You can come almost kind of set it and forget it. It's, it's just so handy. And I mean, I eat rice almost every day. In Japan, actually, you refer to like dinner with, uh, as gohan, which literally means rice. Okay. <laughs> so even in like, if my dad has a meal like pasta, if he doesn't have rice, he'll just eat rice afterward because he doesn't feel like he's eaten unless he has unless rice. Unless he has a bowl of rice. So, yes. Um, you know, we had a guest on a while back uh, uh, who uh, who's, his mother owned Thai restaurants. Oh, cool. And he said the exact same oh, thing. Really? He said that the meal wasn't over until, until he had <laughs> a bowl of rice or if there was rice at every meal. Like here in North America, at one point, it was bread on the table mm, with every meal. Absolutely. Yes, I think we're pretty good to play. Perfect. So this looks fantastic. Yes, boiling away. I always find it interesting the um, that we we breaded it and then mm -hmm. now we put it into a sauce. Yeah. So it almost kind of defeats the purpose of the crunchy breading. But I'm sure that it. I mean, I can't wait to taste it. Yes. To see if it uh, if it lives up. So yes. Next steps. I just bring that over to you. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't reach over that oil. Sounds good. I think we're good there. You got. I think I can grab it. You got her? I got it. Fantastic. Yeah, so you just grab it in one piece. Yeah, so you kind of want the, the, the tonkatsu to be in one piece, and like whatever is left over, you can just put it on the side. I so mean, this is more of an aesthetic thing than okay. anything. Um, when would we typically eat this? Is this kind of a, a breakfast dish, a lunch dish, uh, a supper dish? So it's more of a supper dish. Um, Japanese people tend to eat a lot of eggs, and uh, not only for breakfast, for every meal, really. Um, so yeah, this is definitely more of a supper dish, because it's quite hearty. It is, yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. In other cultures, usually some of them have their heartier dishes in the morning, mm, and true. then they, they lighten up as the evening goes. True. So. Yeah, actually, Japan does that, too. <laughs> 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 but I think, I mean, I've, I've mostly seen people eat, the, eat this on the, for supper. Perfect. Yes. But yes, like in, in Japan, my aunt would, I would wake up to a full meal. So it'd be like fish, miso soup, <laughs> rice, uh, natto. Have you tried natto? No, I haven't. Natto is like a fermented uh, Japanese be, uh, soybeans. Okay. Yeah, it has a quite pungent smell. I I think it's a more of an acquired taste. I have definitely acquired it, and I yeah. love it. It's really good for your health as well. So it's plated. We'll add some seven spice, Japanese seven spice, and that's about it. There you go. That looks wonderful. You can say itadakimasu. Mm. Mm. It's salty and sweet. Salty and sweet. Mm -hmm. And as you were mentioning, uh, the frying and then the sauce, like. It does add a very specific texture. But no, no, it gives the meat a nice unctuousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, it, it takes a, a cheaper cut mm -hmm. and it really elevates it. So Absolutely. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us today, telling us a little bit about your story and, uh, and sharing this wonderful recipe with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.